Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Newton. Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Another week is halfway through, where that means we're, for us Northerners, we're a little bit closer to playing golf again. And I'm going stir crazy, just going to the range, stuff like that just isn't really cutting it, you know, anymore. It's it's hard to get motivated to uh, to go to the range, but you know what? But I'm doing it. You know, it's it's all I can do here. Um, you know, and I, and I kind of like the range a little better than simulator golf, only because you can truly see ball flight, uh, not just on a screen you know, in front of you, but you can actually see ball flight. So I'd rather bundle up, go to the range, throw the heater on and hit balls out there than, uh, than go to the simulator. And, and I kind of think I've always been that way. Like I'd rather go sit at the range, watch the actual ball flight, see where it lands, all that. And to me that, that tends to be a little more important than, you know, launch monitor numbers. You know, if you sit there and study spin and launch and all that stuff all the time, um, it, it just to me isn't, it, it doesn't make it as exciting. So but we're getting closer. I uh, can't believe it's already February. You know, uh, 2021 is already flying by here. It's crazy. So, but yeah, another episode here. Um, you know, before we get going, just let you know, I'm on Instagram at Club Junkie Pod. Uh, and it's, uh, I enjoy all the interaction I've had with most of you guys, which has been pretty fun asking about different clubs and my raw ZX7s and all that stuff has been, uh, it's been pretty fun to, to hang out and talk about and, and all that. So super excited to keep that going. If you want to follow me there, uh, you know, love having conversations, doing little Q and A's, all that stuff. Like I said, at club junkie pod, um, if you could subscribe wherever you're listening, that'd be awesome. Whether it's iTunes or Spotify or Google play, whatever, uh, it'd be cool. And, uh, if you're one of the very, very, very few people watching this on YouTube, if you could subscribe as well, that'd be awesome. So um, <laughs> the very few, I think the first episode I did, uh, did, uh, I'll say well, and then the, the, the past ones have been, uh, slowly going downhill, but again, I'm just sitting here at my desk talking. So I understand that it's probably not the most exciting content in the world. Uh, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, so another, another week, um, you know, got some stuff out there on the, on the range. Uh, a lot of the new big club releases are done. I know there's some stuff on the horizon uh, still coming, so that, that's kind of cool. There's still going to be some some new stuff uh, on the way, but for the most part, the big chunk of it is is kind of done, and I'm going to be excited to start doing a little bit of more like head-to-head -head hitting, you know, like say Callaway versus TaylorMade versus Ping, whatever, and doing a little more like head-to-head -head stuff to kind of compare uh, as opposed to just kind of going out and hitting like all the ping stuff and then all the tailor-made stuff and then all the Callaway stuff and kind of just kind of taking my notes there. So it'll be fun to kind of do that uh, and kind of compare stuff and then start narrowing it down to to what I want to kind of, as much as I say put in my bag, it my bag changes every week. You know, like I'm, I'm always putting new stuff in there. I want to get new stuff on the course as things come out, whether they're shafts, whatever. I mean, things are always changing and always evolving in my bag, which to me is fun. I, I love it. Uh, but like, you know, when people are like, oh, what's in your bag? Like, what, you know, what, what are you playing? It's, it's hard to say exactly what would be in that bag. So, um, you know, it, but, but it's fun. Like I said, that, that's what I love about the game. Um, you know, right now, I think if I had to go play right now, uh, the Ping G425 LST would be in the bag. I think that's my, my number one at the moment. So if that's, uh, you know, if we had to go play right now, I, I'd probably put that in the bag, but, uh, but we'll see. I mean, that could change. I mean, by springtime, who knows? I could change that three or four times. Uh, you never know. <laughs> but uh, today we're going to talk about kind of one of the most underrated uh, wood lines that I think that that's come out. And I think the past three generations, maybe even four, I didn't really hit the the the, the farthest back, uh, at least for me. Like, uh, but the past like four, four generations or four years, I think these are some of the most underrated woods uh, every year. And you know, in the Golf WRX forums, the, the, the people who have hit them really are excited about them and they enjoy them and they, they realize how good they are. But most people, they just don't, they're, they're probably not in their shops uh, or they just don't even think about it when they go into uh, to try some stuff or get fit or anything like that. And what I'm going to talk about is actually the, the Mizuno line of woods. And uh, I know what you're thinking. When you say Mizuno, you automatically think forge blades, uh, you know, forge wedges, uh, you know, just forge blocks of steel because that's what Mizuno is known for. And, and they're, and they're, damn good at it. So <laughs> it's uh, something that they they are well known for and they should be. Uh but they're, they're known for making some of the better, you know, some of the best irons out there. Some of the, you know, really really playable, soft, uh responsive irons. But everybody kind of I think overlooks their woods and their woods are really good. Uh and if unfortunately you're watching for YouTube today, I don't have the heads in front of me uh that I can just put up because I uh I handed them off to another guy in the office who definitely wanted to try them. Uh, and then I also shipped the other ones off to our 
uh, you know, Mizuno guy, Ryan Barath out there in Canada. So uh, I, I don't have any of the heads with me anymore. And uh, so they won't be up here to, to show you, but maybe I'll try to CGI something in or whatever. But uh, yeah, this year now, uh, so the the first generation that I really hit was the ST190, which was two years ago. And then there was the, uh, what is it, the ST, was it 210 or 200 uh, was after that. Um, and then it was basically, uh, you know, yeah, ST200 uh, and 200G. And this year uh, we've come out with the ST and I guess it, I'm judging off their website calls is, is listed as Showtime. Uh, but <laughs> they've got the, uh, the ST series, which uh, this year they've got the STX and the STZ uh, in the drivers. So two different drivers, two, you know, slightly different profiles for, for different players. And, you know, Mizuno is actually the past three. So ST190, 200, and now STXZ. Uh, they've gone away from the blue. They used to do kind of blue woods. And I think the last version of the blue wood, which was like the, I want to say it was like the, it was either like JPX 900 or something like that. Uh, was actually really good. It was just a really bright, bright blue crown, and and a lot of people didn't like it just because of that. Um, but now they've gone to a really high quality kind of black, gloss black finish. Uh, you can kind of see the carbon fiber uh, on the top, uh, but really a, 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 a nice finish. Uh, they've really, you know, it's high quality. It looks really good. Uh, and Mizuno's done a great job the past at least three versions uh, that I, I think they've done a, a great job. And uh, this year, like I said, three, uh, two different drivers and a fairway wood. So uh, no new no new hybrid yet. I don't know if there's one coming or not. I actually don't know. I'm not even lying. Uh, but uh, two new drivers, and they are, uh, they are again, I think, going to be two really underrated drivers. And I think, honestly, the, you know, because these are going to be a little cheaper uh, than the, uh, you know, than some of the other stuff. I mean, I know that uh, you get into the, uh, what do you call it, the... Um, like the tailor of calories, all that, we're up in like the 550 mark. I think there's going to be like 399 uh, or right around that. And I think, you know, when you look at them, Strixon, and then Cobra's at like 450 or something like that. I mean, there's a lot of really good drivers. Uh, and I think there's one more coming out uh, that I can't talk about yet. That's going to be around that price range. And it, it's kind of crazy that that level is so good right now in terms of performance. Uh, and I think a lot of people forget that, that these companies make some really good woods because they're companies, you know, like I said, Mizuno, uh, you know, Srixon, and then, uh, you know, I mean, Cobra is kind of known for woods, but Mizuno and Srixon are really known as as iron companies. So it, it's kind of cool to see this stuff coming out and getting better and better every year. Um, but yeah, so the drivers here, uh, two different versions, STZ, uh, we'll talk about first. That's kind of my, my favorite one out of the two, uh, but STZ is basically made from pretty much all uh, titanium with three kind of carbon fiber ports or spots on it. So the crown's carbon fiber, and then there's two uh, on the sole carbon fiber uh, inserts as well, and the rest is titanium. So they take that weight, they can move it around the head uh, and, you know, add some forgiveness, some, you know, make the MOI a little higher. And the STIZ is really good. It's got a really great sound. Uh, it's, it's really muted. Um, kind of a, I'm trying to think of how to like describe it. It's, uh, you know, I, I feel like it's if you like threw some hot melt in a ping driver, it's kind of like got this, you know, low pitch kind of ting to it, like this, you know, almost kind of like a, a thud and it just goes, uh, but it's really muted. It, it's not very loud and uh, it's really a pleasant, uh, a, a pleasant sound when, when you hit it. Uh, the overall shape is great. It's, it's a little, you see a lot of face for, like the one I was hitting was a, it was a 10 and a half degree. You see a lot of face on it like it looks like it has a lot of loft um and it's just the way like i guess the the hosel kind of transitions into the leading edge uh, of the driver but you do see a lot of face and for some guys for some players that that's not something that they love i don't mind it because i like i said i, I typically play a 10-5 driver so i'm used to seeing some loft uh, but you definitely see some loft on it and then the shape is uh i'll say slightly you know i'll, I'll say it's slightly stretched out from front to back uh, but not a ton. It, it's pretty traditionally shaped. Uh, and then on the top, like I said, it's kind of this gloss black with a carbon fiber, uh, you know, section in it where you can see that carbon fiber weave. But it's uh, overall uh, a, a really good, you know, a really good looking package, really high quality, kind of amazing that they're selling it uh, at the price they are because uh, you just wouldn't think that they would sell, you know, something that, that looks that good at the price they are. But um, but overall, it's a, it's a great looking package. Like I said, I, I think it looks really good. Uh, if you do, if your grip gets a little, 
I want to say like if you're, if you're if your left hand kind of tweaks the club, you can make the thing the, the club head look shut at a dress, but it's more you manipulating the club when you actually set it down on a flat surface. It, it's like dead square at at the standard setting, um, but it's a uh, you know a really good driver. I, I was really shocked at one how forgiving it was because I, I don't think I, I you know I expected the STX to be the big forgiving you know draw one. Uh, and it was all that, but the STZ was actually a lot straighter than I thought it would be. Like, I, I thought it was going to be kind of more the player's club. You're going to be able to work it, uh, and you're going to see more movement right to left, uh, you know, on, on even, you know, minor face open, close path uh, issues. Uh, but really, it just it just wants to go straight. It's a, it's a really high MOR driver, uh, and it just wants to go straight. Uh, the face is this, like, uh, new forged beta titanium that they have. Uh, with kind of a, a different section, almost looks kind of like a, a cross in, the, in behind it uh, from the images that, that you get to see online. Uh, but the ball speed on it, I mean, dead center strikes are really good. And it seems to go, you know, distance-wise as long as anything else I, I've hit out there uh, this year. Uh, it keeps up with it, with everything. Uh, and the ball speed on misses is actually pretty good. I mean, you can see that there's a little loss, but it's not a ton. And, you know, low heel shots definitely stay online really well. Uh, I would say, you know, Pretty close to to on well, or actually, I would say just as well as as Sim Max, which I think is a vast improvement over Sim, uh, the previous Sim Max, but Sim Two Max, uh, the the low heel shots stay online really well. I mean, it goes off to the right just a little bit, but it's not anything that that you think it would be. I mean, you think it would go harder right than it does, uh, but overall, it's a really forgiving package and it's really traditional looking. Uh, it still has the adjustable hosel uh, like Srixon or well, like Mizuno has had for. For a couple of years now it looks like the same tip as st190 200 and now stz and x they look like they're exact same adapters so if you've got some shafts from previous uh you know previous drivers or whatever they're going to work in there which is kind of nice um i took uh I, I didn't slap my club connects in it yet i was going to and i just by the time i got them and got photos of them and all that uh, i just didn't quite have time to get that thing installed, which it doesn't take a ton, but it takes a few minutes to get it installed uh, and to get it on the range. So unfortunately I didn't do that, but, uh, but it's all right. Um, you know, like I said, the, the big thing about the driver is it just wants to go straight. Uh, it doesn't really want to curve a whole lot, but it's not like draw bias, not want to go straight. Like it's, it's really neutral. Um, I don't think it really, you know, good swings. I think just go straight. They, they don't have any draw. They don't really have any fade to them. They just go straight and that's it. Uh, and, Ball flight wise was, you know, I'm going to say it's, it's kind of like a mid to mid high. Uh, I, I didn't, you know, I, again, I kind of, I think expected it to be uh, a little lower ball flight, more players ish, but it wasn't, it was, it was mid high. It was easy to hit. Uh, the misses still even got up in the air a little, you know, pretty well, uh, you know, shots thin, low on the face, didn't get up as high as other drivers, you know, they, they didn't quite launch as high, but overall the, the ball flight was really playable. I thought for me, it was really good. It was, you know, lower than, you know, G425 Max, lower than some of the Callaway stuff. Um, I, I would put it kind of on, on par with uh, with Sim in terms of, of the way it was launching. So probably a little higher than, than G425 LST. Um, you know, a little lower than Sim 2 Max, but, you know, probably right near Sim uh, 2. But uh, really easy to, to hit. Uh, like I said, distance-wise, it seemed to be really good. Again, I haven't hit this stuff on monitors yet, but I'm kind of lining that up, and, and I'm going to get there, but it just hasn't happened yet. Uh, but overall, just a, a really good driver. Um, you know, like I said, low, low on the face, doesn't get up super high, but stuff that's that's high toe, uh, it doesn't go crazy left either. I mean, if you miss it high toe, it's going to go to the left a little bit. It's going to have a little curve to it, uh, but it's going to be less drastic and, and less, uh, you know, crazy than you think. It's going to be a really kind of reserved movement up there. And overall, I think it's just a, a really straight ball flight. If you're somebody who kind of has... You know, like me, like my big miss is left, but I can miss it right too. Uh, it just depends on how bad the swing is and what I'm doing that day. Uh, but this, I think, helps with both. You know, it's not just a take the right side out of play driver. It, it, it's going to help, you know, if you hook it, if you fade it, it's still going to help kind of straighten those balls out. And, you know, the forgiveness factor on it was was really good. And I, I played the S at ST190G uh, a few years ago, and, and the STZ launches lower, launches flatter than that. Uh, and that was a pretty forgiving driver, especially when you move both sliding weights all the way back. Uh, and I think this is even better. I, I think this is, is more stable than that head was. Uh, and I really liked that head. I thought it was really good. 
Uh, this one I think is is overall better kind of in, in all instances. Uh, like I said, I think it launches a little flatter uh, and I think it, it definitely, you know, miss hits and stuff stay online way better. Uh, there's probably a little more ball speed on the on those, you know, off-center shots. And, uh, you know, not a ton because I think S90G or 190G was really good at that. But the STZ is, is I think, even slightly better. Um, and the sound on, on you know, STZ is is, is better than, than the old 190G as well. Um, I didn't really hit the 200, so I'm not going to, you know, totally comment on that one. Um, but the, the 190G was, was really good. And, and this, like I said, I think is a, a better kind of evolution of that. So it's a... Uh, like I said, a, a really good driver. The uh, you know, like I said, the, the wave system on the bottom, which I kind of expected to help with those thin shots, didn't you know? Like I said, get the ball up very high, but it still went pretty good. Uh, now it's a big driver. Like when you set it down, it doesn't look as compact as you know, say Epic Speed or anything like that. I mean, it's a big footprint when you set it down. But for me, I love that because I want I want to feel like if I hit it anywhere on the face, it's gonna go. You know, like I can hit it on the toe, I can hit it on the heel. I've got a bunch of face there that's going to help me out. And this thing definitely does. And the face is pretty deep. You know, when you set it down, it, it's definitely got a deeper face than some of these, uh, some of the other drivers out there. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of real estate there to miss the ball. <laughs> you know, if you don't hit a dead center, there's a lot of real estate there. Uh, that's that, you know, that's going to give you some, some help. Uh, but overall that the STZ, I, I really liked, I, th I thought it was a great driver. And I think, again, going to be pretty underrated this year. And for the price point it's at, uh, I think it's one of those those really good values for somebody who doesn't really want to spend you know 550 bucks plus. Uh, if you want to get into something that uh, uh, you know is is probably you know could be just as good uh, and save yourself 150 bucks, I, I think this is a, a phenomenal option. Um, and again, if you're somebody who has a two way miss, who you know you have a little right and a little left in you, uh, the Z is going to be a, a great option because it's going to help with both those misses. It's not just going to help with the slice or just help with the fade, you know, the, or the hook you're going to be able to kind of hit, uh, you know, get help with both shots. And, and that I really liked about it. So um, overall, just a, a really solid driver. And uh, I was really impressed. Like I said, the, the look of it's really good. When you flip it over the bottom of it, it's got the two carbon fiber panels, one on the toe, one on the heel. Uh, they've got a great fit and finish to them. Uh, the way they kind of seamlessly go with the titanium on the sole. Uh, and then you have like a, what looks like could be a removable weight in the back of the, uh, in the back of the head. It's like a safety Torx, which means it has that little peg in the middle, so you can't just use a standard torque wrench to, to get it out. Um, it's got a little pin there, but I think if you if you had the safety bit, you, you could get it out and probably, uh, you know, toss a little hot melt or something uh, in that head. So uh, overall, just a, a really impressive driver. Like I said, I was really impressed with the, the Srixon uh, ZX drivers. I think the ST drivers from Mizuno, same thing. I think these are a really good uh, and, and you're getting a ton of, uh, of bang for your buck uh, out of these. You know, if you're somebody, like I said, looking for something, don't want to spend the huge money, I think these should be on your radar along with the Srixons. They just, you know, offer a ton of performance for, uh, you know, for the money. So um, I hit this one with, what was in it? It was a, oh, it was the, uh, the Hazardous RDX, uh, Hazardous Smoke RDX Black. Uh, and like I said, that is kind of a lower launching shaft, so that does probably play into a little bit of the, uh, you know, that, that kind of true mid launch. But, uh, again, the, the thing just didn't seem to spin. I mean, hitting it into the wind, you know, you didn't see any ballooning, any rise out of those shots. Uh, and even shots when you kind of did fade it or draw it and you saw the movement of that ball, it wasn't as drastic. And especially stuff where it went to the right, it didn't flare up like some of the other drivers I hit this year that have, you know, were a little bit spinnier. Uh, they would tend to kind of get up there high and just kind of fall off to the right. Uh, th this didn't have that. It it, it, it kind of stayed online a little better, and even so, it kind of kept uh, a little bit of a mid-high ball flight when, when you kind of lost it out to the right, and uh, and, and it probably carried a little farther too. It's hard to 100% tell, but uh, I think it still probably even carried a little bit farther uh, than, than some of these other drivers that I've hit this year that that didn't kind of ha perform the same uh, on that miss. So, SD, SDZ, if you just want to hit it straight. Uh, you need a little help with, you know, draw and fade miss, like I have, uh, is, is a really good option. I think it's definitely worth hitting this year. Uh, if you're going out and trying a bunch of drivers, uh, you know, to go out and try that is definitely worth it. So put that one on your uh, on your list of, of things to try. Uh, if you're looking for a, a really neutral kind of mid ball flight driver that uh, is, is really forgiving. I mean, I, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good combination, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, really solid. So then it's got its brother, the uh, the STX, which is the higher launching kind of draw version uh, of, of that line. So STX is 
uh, a little longer when you look front to back, from face to back. It's a little more stretched out, a little more angular. Uh, and basically, when you look at the, the sole of it, it's got its weight, uh, you know, more in the, in the heel. So where the STZ had kind of two carbon fiber uh, inserts or plates on the bottom, the STX just has one out near the toe, and then the bottom is all, or the near the heel is, is all titanium. Uh, and then the, the kind of the movable weight, or I wouldn't say movable, the weight that's in it is in the heel as well. And basically it's the, you know, kind of the draw version. It's the super forgiving, uh, you know, draw version, help the person take the right side away. Uh, and honestly, it plays really well. <laughs> it's again, the sound and feel uh, are really good. It's got that same kind of, uh, you know, low pitch kind of, you know, thwack to it, I want to say. I mean, it's it's just got a low pitch uh, you know, kind of metallic sound when it takes off, uh, and it's and it's muted. It, it's not really loud. I mean, hitting it at the like the Royal Oak Golf Center where I'm at, which is all covered, so you're basically you've got you know back, roof, everything. So I mean, everything in there's a little amplified. Um, you know, this was probably one of the more quiet drivers uh, that that I've hit this year. Both of them. I mean, they both really uh, were quiet and and easy. You know, on the ears. And nobody else around you when hitting balls was kind of going, whoa, whoa, what was that? Like kind of looking at you like did happen with G425 Max 3-Wood. Uh, a guy was, uh, I believe he was filming something for maybe YouTube. He was <laughs> talking to, to his phone quite a bit. Uh, but he kind of turned around when I hit uh, the first couple shots with that uh, one day. So these here, uh, the ST series, way, way more muted and, and, and you know, quieter than that. Uh, so the S, like I said, STX more draw version and, and it launches higher. So this, I, I would say kind of launches more mid high. Uh, I would say I would put it, you know, a little lower than uh, G425 max for me, uh, probably more along the SIM max line or maybe slightly higher than that. Uh, probably closer, you know, really close to the, the Callaway Epic max. Uh, they, they all kind of launched up there and this thing definitely had some draw to it. It was definitely harder to hit the right side uh, or, or miss it right with this driver. And as a guy who tends to, to hook the ball or, or draw the ball and, and that's kind of my shot shape i definitely notice more uh left to right or right to left movement uh you know when, when seeing those shots uh which is fine because that's what you know th this driver for me is probably not going to be the one that i would i would pick necessarily anyway uh but it definitely has you know that help for anybody who hits a fade or a slice and kind of needs that help this thing's got it and and it's awesome uh for that and and honestly majority of players do slice the ball. So, uh, you know, it's got the same uh, beta titanium face, uh, the same, you know, nice finish on the top where it's got the, you know, the gloss black with the carbon uh, visible, you know, uh, behind it. And uh, again, the, the shape is really good. I mean, to me, some of the shapes out there, when you start getting into the more forgiving kind of draw bias drivers, they're, they're really elongated or they're stretched in a funny way uh, and they don't look as good. I think this is a pretty classic sh uh, shape. And you don't lose the face depth either. So if you're somebody who kind of misses high or low on the face, this thing's still really deep. And I think a lot of drivers that are meant to kind of fight that draw start to get really shallow when they try to stretch them out from, you know, from heel to toe and give kind of more real estate that way to, and also to increase the, the MOI. Here, you still get the deep face. So if you're somebody who kind of does miss high or low or, you know, you're just not consistent hitting the center, but you miss it, you know, like I said, high in the face, low in the face, I think this is, uh, you know, it's nice to have that, you know, the ability to, to have a deep face for, for, for those misses. Now, this one here, I, th I thought did, when you missed it low on the face, I, helped, I think it did go, you know, it, it did go a little higher than STZ. Uh, I felt it was a little more forgiving on that shot. Uh, again, my miss, typically low heel a lot, um, was basically a, a fairly straight ball. I mean, the offline of it was, was almost nothing because that extra draw weight in the heel uh, when it hit there, it just kind of went off to the right, but it didn't really curve hard. It just kind of went right, uh, you know, right of my target line and, and just kind of went. And it didn't, I mean, it lost distance, but it wasn't, again, it was, it was a really playable shot and something that instead of being 30 yards in the woods, you'd probably be, you know, in the rough on the right side and, and have a look and still hitting the green. So it was a really forgiving driver on that shot. Now the toe shot, you know, it, it definitely, for me at least, had some, some left to it, I'd be playing out of the trees, uh, you know, if I really kind of toe hooked it. Uh, but again, with my club path and all that, I don't think I would ever be fit into this driver or, you know, it wasn't really built for my swing. Uh, 
Um, it, it's a little, it was a little, it's a little lighter overall too. I think the head on this one's lighter as is, uh, the shafts I put in these are, are a little lighter. The one that, uh, that I was hitting had the, uh, the Project X Riptide CB, even flow Riptide CB, so the counterbalance version. And, uh, it definitely had like a lighter swing weight than the STZ, uh, which is good though. Cause I think that lighter swing weight, the counterbalance shaft for that person who slices it, it helps them kind of square it up a little bit again. I think all that stuff is 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 you know works uh, in this in this driver head. Um, you know, again, I, I think for for a a draw driver, which typically you get stuck with kind of this funky package or funky sound or whatever. I think Mizuno really nailed it in keeping everything pretty darn traditional while still giving the help that that the players need. Um, you know, like I said, the draw bias is. It's there. It's not crazy, but it's there, and it definitely does. You know, like I said, for if a guy doesn't hit the right a ton, but does hit it over there, you know, the right side could basically be pretty much forgot about for the most part with with STX. Um, you know, like I said, compared to the two, definitely flies higher. I, I'd put STZ in kind of the mid launch category. I put STX in the mid high launch category, um, and again, more of a draw ball flight to it. You know, just just naturally, the STZ is is straighter. Uh, SDX is, it has just has more draw to it, and uh, but like I said, overall a really good performer. It sounds good, it feels good. Um, you know, it's it's responsive when both of them are responsive when you when you miss when you hit it off the heel, you hit it off the toe, or you just miss it. You know, a little off center, you you can feel that 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 shot was different. You get a little different vibration, so it's nice to get that feedback. You know, while you're while you're hitting those shots, but overall I think two really solid drivers at a really you know decent or competitive price point that that should be looked at and you shouldn't look at it and say well it's 150 bucks less than you know this driver it must not have you know it must not be as good because because i think it really is um you know mizuno's done done a really good job with woods the past at least three years that i've played you know been been kind of following it um have done a really good job with uh with their woods and uh they're, they're really solid so both drivers like i said stx uh mid-high ball flight uh more draw to it and if you're uh, looking for more just straight neutral ball flight at a kind of a mid level STZ, you know, I, it, it's really uh, like I would say neutral wise, it, it's as neutral as probably G uh, ping G425 LST. Like it's that and kind of neutral in terms of, you know, you know it'll let you turn it over, but it, it just kind of wants to go straight. So, uh, but like I said, really good drivers. And then honestly, I think you'd be shocked when you pick them up how good the fit and finish is of them, you know, the quality of them there, I think rivals anything out there, you know, the higher end stuff, all that, it, it, it's right with it. So uh, really exciting. I, I definitely want to try STZ uh, with a couple different shafts. Like I said, I got a, I had to, had to ship one off to our boy Barath. Um, and then another guy in the office definitely wanted to try it as well after I was talking about it. So um, I hopefully will get the head back and, and be able to, uh, to try some different shafts and stuff like that in there. So uh, once I do that, I'll be able to talk about it more, which will be kind of exciting. But uh, both drivers really, really good. I was uh, I was really impressed with both of them, much like I was impressed with with ST one hundred and ninety when it came out. So um, definitely take a look at those. Like I said, especially if you're looking for something where you don't want to you don't want to spend the you know the five hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, you'd like to do something a little less expensive. You know, uh, an, an, another great option, which I think that price point uh, is getting filled with some really good options as well. So. They also have a younger brother, which would be the STZ three wood. So uh, the three wood, uh, which came, uh, the first thing I noticed when pulling it out of the the, the package, um, the biggest thing I noticed was was size. It's a pretty big fairway wood, uh, and and by big I mean it's got a decent sized footprint when you set it down, um, and it's got a really deep face on it. I, I was shocked at how deep the face was on uh, on the STZ three wood. Uh, overall, the shape's really traditional. Again, uh, face to back, uh, you know, not very long. It's not crazy, you know, crazy elongated, anything like that. It's a really traditional shape. It, uh, I, I would, I would say it's more round than the drivers. Uh, it's not quite as angular uh, in the back, but the same thing. It's got the carbon top, uh, the really nice black glossy finish, and uh, you know, same thing, adjustable hosel on it, which is really nice uh, to kind of fine tune it. And it sits pretty much square in the neutral setting. Uh, if, you, if you go to raise the, the loft a little bit, it, it, it will shut a touch, or at least be noticeable. It's not a lot. But for people who really look at those things like I kind of do, it does shut a little bit, which which I don't love the look of it. It performs great. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's a, it's a big three wood. It's deep faced. 
you guys who love hitting, you know, three woods off, off tees, like, like I typically do, like my three wood 90% of the time is, is off the tee. Um, this thing, I mean, you definitely want to hit it off the tee. Like it just looks kind of like a tiny, tiny driver that you can just, you know, put a low tee in the ground and just, you know, rip balls off the tee box on short par fours. And, uh, it definitely is really good at that. So uh, it's, uh, but the funny thing is, so, so I, I pulled it out. The big, first thing I noticed deep face and I was kind of like, Oh boy, hitting this off the deck may be an issue, uh, especially off mats because you know, mats don't have, if you try to hit down on the ball, you're just, you're hitting a mat. It's not, it doesn't have a total lot of give. Uh, and you tend to know right away that you catch it fat or whatever. So, um, but I took it out and first thing I did was like, I'm just going to hit some shots off the, you know, off the mat. I'm not going to tee it up first. I'm going to hit it off the mat, see how it goes. Um, and again, just like the, the drivers a really good muted sound to it. Uh, it's got a, you know, steel face instead of titanium. So it's a, it's slightly higher pitched in, in terms of the, the sound. It's kind of a, a little bit more of a ting to it, but it's still really muted. It's, it's pretty quiet. It, it's, it's a good sounding driver. Um, but hitting it off the, the mat, I mean, the first shots hitting it right off the turf, no tee. And it actually was pretty easy to elevate. It was pretty easy to get off the ground. Now it doesn't fly crazy high. Like it's not like hitting a G425 Max where it just, you know, it, it, it basically scratches the clouds and comes back down. Um, but it is easy to elevate. Like shots are easy to get in the air. They just don't go that high. Uh, for me, I, I thought it was a very, very mid to mid low ball flight. It was very penetrating. It still went a long way. Like it, it definitely has a hot face to it. Um, but it, again, it's very much like it's STZ brother very straight it doesn't have a whole lot of draw to it uh it doesn't have a whole lot of fade to it it just wants to go straight and those are the shots i hit basically all the time in the range was just straight balls for the most part i mean if you put a terrible swing on it it'll go right or left but um but it just basically wants to go straight and uh you know like i said for this thing here it, it, it is large so it kind of gives you that confidence that you know if you do hit it out on the toe or the heel it's going to give you some help and it does it, it's it's for a three wood it's probably you know, one of the straighter ones I hit, like I said, it's probably maybe right behind G425 Max in, in terms of consistency and just hitting a straight ball. Um, but it is, you know, like I said, for me, it was mid, kind of mid-low launch, especially off the turf. Off the tee, it was more mid. It, 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 it you know, got up definitely higher. It was easier to elevate off the tee. Um, but it still wasn't like, you know, it's not a super high launching three wood, I don't think. I think for a lot of players who, you know, hit a really high three wood and struggle to find something that they can kind of keep flat and keep down and keep control of, uh, this could be a great option. Like I said, that deep face seems to make it pretty low spin, even off the tee, uh, you know, the ball would just kind of be boring out there and then just, you know, slowly fall to the ground and, and bounce and roll. Uh, for me, it was, a, it was a really, like a really good three wood. I mean, it had a, a Matori XF3, uh, uh, 70 gram in it, which I've hit the F3 before in, uh, in a lot of drivers and stuff. And it's a fairly mid-high launch shaft, and, and this head didn't get crazy high, even with that shaft. So I think overall, and it is a real deal shaft, too, for uh, anybody asking. I've, uh, I've kind of confirmed that. So a really great package there in terms of what it is. But, yeah, it's got that carbon fiber crown. Uh, same thing, it's got that, uh, that wave technology low on the face. And when you do hit it low on the face, uh, it still gets up pretty decent. I, I felt like the shot height didn't change a ton, hitting it low on the face or center. Uh, you know, it was, it was slightly lower low, but, but not that much. Like, and the ball still got up, it got up better, I think, than the drivers did. Um, and then, you know, shots off the, the, off the heel, off the toe still, you know, stayed online. I mean, they would have a little bit of movement, but like the driver, it, it just wanted to go straight. And, and those balls stayed online really well. Like I said, I, I think the only thing that might go straighter would be the G425 Max. Uh, and, and that goes ultra, ultra high, even if you, you know, take a degree off it and, and on all that it still goes high so uh if you're somebody who you know wants a really straight three wood but doesn't want to hit it to the moon uh, i think sdz is 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 a great option there it just really goes kind of flat i think this and uh you know the sim 2 titanium are, are really just flat flying three woods that still offer a bunch of forgiveness still offer a good amount of ball speed but they just go want to go straight and they don't have a ton of draw to them they just you know like i said they're, they're pretty neutral bias and uh, you know, sound wise, they're both actually really good. I think between those two drivers, you would basically have, you know, if you were hitting them fairly similar, I think, you know, if you're somebody who hits a little bit more off the turf, you go Sim 2 Matt or Sim 2 Titanium. If you're somebody who hits a lot of balls off the tee, you go STZ. I mean, they're, they're just, you know, that's the one thing that kind of separates them in terms of distance or in terms of uh, play. Uh, distance, you know, the Titanium face may be a touch hotter, but again, that's, that's, you know, it, that is what it is. So, 
Um, you know, with this one here, I think honestly, like I would actually be interested in looking at the five wood and then opening it, you know, turning it down to like three wood length or three wood uh, uh, loft. So basically taking the, the 18 degree head, turning it down to like 16 uh, and then, you know, playing that. And I think it could be a really good option as well in terms of a, a really good four wood uh, that's really neutral. Because uh, it seems like there's four woods out there, but they all tend to be a little more dry, draw bias. I think if you had a four wood, you know, a five wood turned open to 16 degrees, uh, you could have a really neutral open face four wood that just would be would be awesome and look really good. Put a little, you know, kind of mid launch or mid high launch shaft in it and you could have, just be hitting hitting bullets all day. So, um, like I said, but, but again, for the size of it, easier to hit off the turf than I thought it was going to be. You know, I, I thought it was gonna, I was going to really struggle and and uh, and struggle to get under the ball and get it up in the air. It, it's pretty easy to elevate. Just like I said, it, it's kind of got that mid ball flight. It's kind of flat, and uh, uh, you know, I said off the tee, it's great. Off the turf, I'd like to hit it maybe a little higher. So, like I said, that that five wood turned to four wood could be uh, more the option for me. But uh, overall, again, I, I think uh, a, a, an underrated three wood that that a lot of people when they try it are going to realize how good it is. Um, just not enough people are going to try it, you know, when you, when you get down to it. So overall, like I said, uh, uh, the Mizuno woods, two drivers, the fairway, uh, definitely worth trying if you're out, you know, kind of demo and looking for stuff, uh, trying to find, st you know, your next driver, definitely worth looking at. And like I said, I think the, the SDZ for that, that player just wants a neutral ball flight is, is forgiving, easy, you know, easy to hit, not crazy high launch, you know, it's not the typical super forgiving driver. And, uh, you know, like I said, re really solid. So Looking to get some more time in with those. Hopefully, I can. Uh, like I said, hopefully, I get that STZ back <laughs> from uh, from, uh, from my coworker. But uh, overall, like I said, really good woods that are going to kind of going to go uh, underrated this year, which stinks. But uh, but again, they're they're really solid. So the next thing we're going to get into is new shaft. It's new shaft time, boys, and uh, you know I love new shafts. So. So the new shaft that um, I got to hit, which was really nice, was from, it's a driver shaft, a wood shaft, but it's actually from Nippon. So I know I've talked about some of the Nippon stuff uh, before, and basically the Reggio Formula series, which they, they've they made uh, for, for a few years now. This is the second generation. Uh, this is the plus version. And they've actually come out now with the, there was the, the B plus, the M plus, and now there's the MB plus. And kind of the cool thing they do with, with their uh, wood shafts is... They kind of tailor them after their iron shafts. So if you play the Modus 120, well, the the, the B plus uh, over here, which is blue, would be the kind of the shaft that you'd want to try first. It's kind of got that profile where you know it's kind of that that mid launch to mid low launch, a uh, little softer handle section, uh, but really smooth feel. But it's got that same profile to it, that same feel to it. And then uh, you know if you're somebody who plays the say modus 105 or 125 there's the b plus which is kind of that mid high ball flight a uh, little stiffer handle section and uh again has that kind of similar feel and then if you're somebody who plays like modus 130 which is a little higher launching uh, but a firmer handle section they have the m plus which is the the red version over here so they've got uh you know three models kind of based on their iron shafts and it's kind of a cool way to fit it because me personally i really do like the tour 125 like that's the shaft that i've kind of liked the best from them uh from nippon and the B mb plus i was kind of waiting for I, I i was i was given the information that it was coming out this year uh kind of in the fall last year and it was kind of a bummer because i had to wait for it to come out and i, I kind of had to wait to, to say anything about it until uh until recently but uh um, the MB plus is, is, is really good. So I've got all three, uh, and I've been able to kind of hit them all, which is, which is really awesome. And they do kind of fit into those, those profiles, the M plus easy to launch. It, it's high launch, but it's got that stiff handle section. If you're a person kind of like me with a, a fairly quick tempo, uh, it's still a very tight feeling shaft, uh, but it launches high and, and it's, you know, all three of them, I think are some of the smoothest shafts you'll probably ever hit. And I know everybody talks about like the old blue board stuff and all that, I, I want to say that these are probably the smoothest shafts that, that I've ever hit. Uh, even going back to those, those old days, uh, they just, there's something about them that they just, you know, they are silky smooth when you go to load them. Uh, and when they unload, I mean, there's just zero harshness to them. There's zero excess vibration. They just, they feel really good. Um, so the M plus, I, I, you know, was exactly that it, it launched higher, uh, had a little bit of spin to it. 
uh, which is great for what it is. I think it's a, a phenomenal for the bigger hitter. I think it's a phenomenal fairway shaft. If you're somebody who, you know, wants something that feels great but helps get that ball in the air, the M plus or uh, the M plus is is phenomenal. Uh, or in your driver, you know, if you're somebody who's looking for something a little higher ball flight, uh, and then the MB plus, which just came out, like I said, a little firmer handle section than B plus, uh, but launches a little higher. So it's it's kind of that uh, that mid high launch. Uh, it's again really tight, uh, especially for me. Like I said, quick tempo. You know, I, I don't. I don't take it back and, and bring it through very smoothly. And, you know, I said that, that slightly firmer handle section than B plus definitely gives a little more control. Um, and again, super smooth, it, 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 you know, all three of them super smooth. So, you know, like I said, when you load it, I mean, you can feel that shaft kind of, kind of bend. And then as, as you go into impact, it has a good kick to it. Uh, and like I said, in impact, you don't get any of that harsh vibration. It's just, you know, the, the ball just goes. Um, but definitely uh, the MB plus is, like I said, that kind of mid to mid high launch. It uh, it definitely you know is a tight shaft. The dispersion is really good. Uh, even you know miss hits there. It's got a, a you know it, it's got some stability to it that keep those keep those shots online. Uh, and like I said, I mean for players who you know are looking for that feel, I don't think there's anything out there. Or at least there's not much out there that's 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 better than this. Um, but the MB plus was you know like I said something I was waiting for. The B plus is really good. I, I hit that well, and it is like kind of a true mid launch shaft, uh, mid to mid low depending on. Uh, uh, you know, on the player, uh, and that one there, you know, like I said, you, you have your three distinct profiles. MB probably fits me the best. One, it's kind of mid to mid high launch, which, like you guys have, I've told you a million times, I don't hit a super high ball, so the you know mid high, mid to mid high is kind of what I look for in a, in a dry in a wood shaft, whether it's whether it's driver, whether it's three wood, whatever. That's kind of what I look for, um, and honestly, it's you know that kind of fits the bill. Uh, like I said, the firmer handle section, again, because my tempo is garbage and uh, <laughs> and really quick. Um, but overall, just a, a really good shaft. It, it's one of those things where it, it's fun to hit because it just it feels good. Uh, it plays well. And, you know, like I said, the, the technology in there, I mean, it's got, you know, the carbon fiber that it's got in uh, is, you know, high end stuff. Just like, you know, just like any other shaft company you think about or that, you know, that you read about, you know, these guys are using, you know, really high end stuff as well. Uh, but MB plus, like I said, it, I was hitting it a lot in my sim uh, right before I got got all, kind of got all the new uh, new products in, uh, and in sim it did. It was, you know, I, I would say if I want to compare it to anything, I would say it kind of launches just a little lower than say Ventus Red. I would say it kind of plays in between Ventus Blue and Ventus Red in terms of of launch. Um, it definitely has kind of a you know, but it's tight. It, it doesn't you know the ball doesn't go offline really easy. I mean, when you put a good swing on it, it's extremely consistent, extre extremely repetitive, uh, and you know compared to the iron shaft, I would say it is really similar. I mean, it it, it does kind of have that that feel of the iron shaft. Now the steel shaft is going to be a little more harsh and offer a little more vibration because you know it's steel, but in terms of the feel, in terms of the loading, the unloading, uh, it, it is very similar to the, the, the steel shaft, the the Modus Tour one twenty five. Um, I haven't hit the 130 much, so I can't really say the M plus is really close, but now having another set of, uh, 120s, uh, in my current, uh, what do you call it? My current, uh, uh, ZX sevens. I mean, the, the, these things kind of do play very similar to their, their iron, you know, the, the iron shaft they're designed, uh, uh, after. So, um, just a, a really kind of cool way to do a shaft line. Like I said, to model it after your, your iron shafts. Um, but again, I, I, you know, these are, like I said, worth trying because I think the feel alone is is definitely worth it. Um, like I said, they're they're just ultra smooth, but they're they're not loose. It's not like you know some people when they find a smooth shaft, they feel like like it plays really soft and it plays really loose, and they feel like shots get away from them. Um, it it definitely doesn't feel that way with with any of these three, but but the, the you know the MB plus for sure. Uh, you know everything's super tight. It's just one of those uh, those shafts that you know in terms of ball speed, it definitely feels like there's some kick to it. Uh, it definitely helps like it's giving you a little bit of help at, at you know, at impact. So overall, just a, a really solid mid, you know, mid to mid high, you know, mid to mid high launching shaft uh, out there. And, and like I said, if you're somebody looking for, you know, something just a little higher than, than maybe a mid launch shaft and you really want something that's going to, you know, give you some phenomenal feel while still being a really good performer, uh, you know, the, the Reggio Formula MB Plus is is really solid. Like I said, I, I really liked it. Um, I've actually got a, uh, uh, they sent me a, a nicely sent me a, a 75, uh, as well that I think may, uh, may go on a three wood also. So, um, but really a good option. I can't wait to hit it in a few more heads. 
now that I have, uh, or, or did have, like I said, when I get them back, some of these uh, newer heads, it's going to be pretty nice to, to put this in some of the newer heads and try it with that. Um, I think, you know, between this and a, and a Ping G425 LST that kind of launches a little lower, a little flatter, could be a really good combination. So, um, you know, like I said, excited to kind of hit these, uh, you know, more uh, with the new heads. But uh, like I said, having all three now, you, you can kind of see the differences and uh, and kind of uh, feel the differences uh, when, when you take these things out and hit them. So, um, like I said, I've been a big fan of their line. I, I hit a, uh, hit them last year, or not last year, but uh, like two years ago with uh, with the original uh, Regio Formula line and now with the Plus line. I think the Plus is uh, is a little tighter. It's a little better in terms of uh, dispersion uh, than, than the previous gen. But again, I, I think there's, there's not too many shafts out there that feel as smooth uh and as good as uh, as the whole line does so uh like i said whether you're looking for something you know kind of mid to mid low mid to mid high or something a little higher launch you know any of their versions are gonna offer you a really good feel good dispersion and it's it's pretty much that ball flight so uh you know if you let your local fitter whatever definitely uh try them out i think they'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised of, of how well they play so um yeah but i've been a big fan like i said of the whole line for for couple years now so i'm excited to uh to hit, to hit this one more in some different heads and uh and, and see how it works in some of these other uh these new heads this year so uh, the club connects tips on it and it'll and it'll stay on it for a while as uh, uh as, as i try it more and more so like i said give those a try if uh you know it's your local fitter or you know if you go to uh nipponshaft.com and uh and check it out i think they have a whole thing on there where you can find your local dealer uh because i know they may not be as easy to find as, as some other shafts out there so um, they have a you know a dealer network on there. Check it out and uh, and give them a try because I think like I said I think a lot of people would be surprised at how how well they play and kind of like how Mizuno makes really good woods but they're known for irons. Nippon makes some you know good wood shafts even though they're known for iron shafts. So um, yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of all I got this week. Uh, like I said, I think some some cool stuff uh, there to talk about. Um, yeah, I've got some other. Uh, Interesting things to, to hit here for, for the next couple of weeks. I got some new fairway woods, or, or I wouldn't say crazy new, but I've got uh, another Cobra fairway wood, uh, a Homna fairway wood. I've got some other stuff to hit here that uh, that I just haven't gotten around to. So I want to kind of, you know, make sure I get through as much of these these lines as I can. Um, and I've even got a set of Kirkland wedges that, uh, that I snagged over the weekend while buying chicken and milk and eggs so uh I'll, I'll take those out and hit them as well i know that's not new i know th those reviews have been around for for a long long time but uh this is the first time i want to hit them and and i do have a couple gripes about them so we'll, we'll see how that goes but um but yeah so that's uh, that's all coming in the next uh, week or so and uh yeah like i said if you if you want to uh you know subscribe wherever you listen to the podcast whether it's apple spotify you know google whatever uh would super appreciate it really appreciate the follows and the listens and, uh, you know, if you want to follow me on Instagram at club junkie pod, it's, uh, it's always fun. I try to post stuff on there when I can and, you know, do a little Q and A's here on, on typically Wednesdays to, you know, just kind of answer some questions, talk some golf equipment and it's, it's always fun. So I appreciate everybody who always participates. It's, uh, it's a blast. And, uh, yeah, if, uh, you want to hit me up with any questions, anything there, like I said, Instagram, uh, hit me up uh, there. I'm, I'm more than happy to, to, to chat it up, answer some questions, whatever. And, uh, yeah, I think that's all I got, and uh, we'll see you, uh, see you guys next week. Have a good one.